One of the last things that anyone growing up in Buffalo in the 50s, 60s, and 70s ever expected was that the city they grew up in would turn out to be a viable Hollywood film set. But somewhat incredibly, uh, beginning in 1980, it did. Um, we're going to be seeing the results of one of these films opening uh, April 29th um, in the city, a, a movie called Henry's Crime, which starred uh, Keanu Reeves, and as a, a lot of people know, was filmed in Buffalo. Um, but I've written a piece for the Spotlight section where I discuss a whole lot of films that were uh, made somewhat incredibly in Buffalo, New York, beginning in 1980. And let me give you, for those of you who may have forgotten, a, a, a little bit of a list of some of the things that have been made in, in Buffalo um, since 1980. The first one, uh, for, movies have always been made in Niagara Falls, but we can't really count the falls because the, the falls are so beautiful and, and one of the wonders of the world that of course people are going to want to make movies in Niagara Falls. Making movies in downtown Buffalo or some place in Buffalo, that's a little more unusual. So the first thing um, was a movie uh, in 1980 called Hide in Plain Sight. That's a movie where James Conn and his producer decided that since the movie was set in Buffalo about a man who was seeking to find his uh, children in the witness protection program where they had been whisked away by them uh, with his ex-wife. Um, since that story uh, was, was set in Buffalo, why not film it here? And by God, they filmed it here. Good old James Caan, in his directing debut, also starred in the film. He filmed it here. We at the Buffalo News take a little bit of credit for that because one of the, guy, uh, the story came really from pieces that were originally published in the Buffalo News and were written by one of our reporters at the time, Lee Coppola. Uh, wonderful stories, picked up by Time Magazine, caught the attention of a whole bunch of Hollywood people, and that's where it came, came from. Um, there's a movie called Tuck Everlasting. Now that's a movie uh, by Frederick King Keller, um, a name you're, he's a local filmmaker, but back then his, he made a movie in Buffalo called Tuck Everlasting. That was made around here. The big one, the first really big one that was made in part in Buffalo was a movie called Best Friends. And that, believe it or not, meant that Burt Reynolds and Goldie Hawn came to town to shoot. Uh, and that was a movie directed by Norman Jewison. Norman Jewison is a fellow from uh, Toronto, is one of the great, uh, he's one of the great living, one of the great filmmakers, but he's a, a, a fellow who's headquartered in Toronto and he remembers uh, uh, in the days when uh, Buffalo was the sophisticated place that Torontonians would have to go for a nightlife. Um, after that, we have Red Keller again, um, who at the same time as the best movie from Buffalo, which I'll get to, at the same time as that was being made, um, Fred, almost the same time, Fred was making a movie in Buffalo called Vamping, which starred Patrick Duffy, um, and was written by uh, Michael Healy, who was then the arts editor of the Buffalo Courier Express, and he's now a major executive with uh, Disney Television. At the same time as that was going on, almost the same time anyway, um, the best movie that was ever made in Buffalo was being made, and that was um, Barry Levinson's The Natural, starring Robert Redford, and the cast that when you look at it now still seems kind of mind-boggling. Um, here's who was in that cast. Um, what was it? We, uh, Kim Basinger was in that cast. Darren McGavin was in that cast. Um, Glenn Close was in that cast. Robert Duvall, uh, Wilford Brimley. It was just a mind-boggling cast of characters, and that it came to Buffalo uh, to make the movie, and they did, uh, and it still remains the best movie that was ever made in this town, I, in my opinion. Please feel free to, <laughs> to disagree. After that, our luck changes in a little bit for the worse. There's a movie called Buffalo 66. God bless Vincent Gallo. That's the movie where, actually, it's a very funny and very interesting uh, movie. If only he hadn't pinned the, uh, his own family's dysfunctions on the rest of the city, we'd all be fine. But he did, and there we are, and we have to, and we have to live with the result. Um, after that, there's a, 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 probably the most devoted family ever to make a movie in Buffalo was the Burton family and they made Manna from Heaven in Buffalo. They actually cared. They were probably the only ones who ever actually cared that every scene in their movie would look as beautiful as possible. 
would make Buffalo look as beautiful as possible. And as a result, uh, all, all the way through the movie, there are a lot of scenes which, in do, which indeed do make Buffalo look quite beautiful. Um, then we have a movie called The Savages, in which Buffalo does not look necessarily quite as beautiful. It's, a, it's not a bad movie, The Savages. That's, um, it starred uh, Laura Linney and uh, Philip Seymour Hoffman as a, a, a pair of, of grown children who came to uh, deal with uh, their father who was suffering from uh, Alzheimer's. There's an unnecessary crack about the city in that movie, but hey, they filmed here. And then we have uh, Henry's Crime, uh, which stars uh, Keanu Reeves as a fellow who has a very unlucky life who decides uh, to rob a bank that he's already served time for robbing, even though he never had anything to do with it. He decides to rob the bank, and he also falls in love with uh, Vera Farmiga, who is, now get this, She's a woman who makes uh, lottery commercials for Buffalo Television, but at the same time, she also appears in productions of Chekhov. And who also is in this film? Our old friend James Kahn, who began all of this in the first place in 1980 with Hayden Plainsight, and James Kahn and Vera Farmiga are the two best things in uh, Henry's Crime, which opens on the 29th. That's our history of, Buffalo, uh, of movies in Buffalo, a little desk pocket history of movies in Buffalo since 1980.